everyone, my name's Silver, and I can't seem to win as of late. What am I talking about? Well, <clears throat> guys, I'm talking about the episode review you're currently watching. It is 12.30 at night. It took me forever to get home, and then I had to sit through the episode, watch it, get the screenshots, and now I finally get to the recording part. And it won't go up much before midnight. So guys, if you really do want to help me out, please leave a like. Subscribe if you're new, and can we please try to get this up to 800 views? Last week, we hit 200, which is below what we hit the prior time we did one. <clears throat> and I don't know if that's because Bush Hero skipped out on a week or what. But please, if you're new, we're trying to reach 200 subscribers by the end of this month. If we do, I will be giving something away. It's a surprise, but I will be giving away something. Now, with that being said, let's move into episode 14 of Card Fight Vanguard. <clears throat> and can we just start off with how scary Kazuto looks? So as we know, last week, Kazuto was diff-rided by Giza. Or possessed, or whatever you want to call it. So with this outcome, we get a Chrono versus Kazuto fight. And by far, this has probably been one of the best fights I've seen in a long time. So our next scene here shows the three apostles, Chaos, Dark Faced, and what's his name i forget so easily <clears throat> and they they're pretty smug about uh giza being awoken and then they get shocked that he wants to fight and i honestly love this picture it's just beautiful um honestly though this like i said this is one of the best fights that we've had in a while <coughs> sorry i've gone from being super quiet for the past hour to trying to get this done so i'm coughing a bit um so what do we have here well we have um plot filler more plot filler and brother of main character we haven't seen forever talking about the um distortion that has taken place and yeah that's about it uh then we come back to chrono wanting to fight and Wow, look at the detail. Even on the card here, like an actual card last I checked has the little inscription at the bottom saying something like Apushiro All Rights Reserved. And even this card has it. Like, I don't know if you guys can tell, but Apushiro All Rights Reserved. That's some major detail. And that's not the point of the video. But so Chrono is going to fight uh, Kazuto or Giza. Um, we sort of have the overshot view. They don't give us a split screen of them fighting like the other apostles. So this is, as you didn't know, was more than likely the thumbnail. I haven't decided on that yet. <clears throat> but I really like this overdraft shoot. We see both G zones. We get both decks. And we have the opposite colors starting Vanguard. It's just a beautiful, beautiful shot. Um, so they've gone through. It's a pretty standard fight overall for a while with this so i didn't really take a lot of screenshots of their fight and very few of them i sort of just watched and listened for anything important um and then we have this imagery of kazuto being like in a suspended stasis of sleep under the influence of giza and i thought this was pretty unique it, it it's nice um just in case you guys don't know because i don't think it's been seen thus far but um the mark on kazuto's hand now is pink um, and then the fight picks up with the first grade 3 ride of the game, which is Dragfall Luard. And I have my own theory video I'm going to do on this card a little bit later. But its skill is on stride. Um, uh, it's call a rear guard and then retire a rear and call two grade ones. It, it's a pretty unique skill. Um, but I like the art of this card. Like, Just look how beautiful it is. It's honestly amazing, and I can't wait for a full release of the skill. Um, Tayo sort of explains what happens to Chrono. Again, it's a pretty standard turn here, so I didn't take too many pictures. Then we get Chrono's turn and the first stride of the game, which is very unoriginal. Like, I'm starting to want to beat my head against my desk with how bad Chrono is getting. Metal Pulsar, Avenir, Phoenix. And if you don't know what this does, please just go Google it. I'm, I'm, I don't have the time to look up the exact wording of the skill all i know is that this card is a standard g unit and i was really hoping for something more unique from chrono but we didn't get a uniqueness 
Um, he calls units because time leaping shenanigans. I, I just like Chrono Claw Monkey or Chrono Claw. It's just beautiful. And I like Jackal. I wish Jackal's skill was better, but I like this card. So that's sort of why they're here, just to show his time leaping shenanigans. And then we get Kazuto's first stride, which will personally become my first stride if I can get four copies of it. But it is a new Luard stride where he's a full dragon. And this goat feeds into the lore of Kazuto's avatar, Luard, becoming crazy and a full dragon-like. The art on this card alone is beautiful. I mean, the, the imagery, I'm printing this up. Like, I'm going to go back to the episode, find this exact moment, remove the texture, and print this and hang this on my wall. Because I just love this card. Um, so, like I said, superior call one from the deck, retire one, superior call grid ones, two grid ones from the deck. And that leads to shenanigans. And then this card has a ritual four sk has a ritual skill. For every four grid ones in the drop zone, give the front row 10k. So this is, I see a lot of decks probably running about eight or nine grade twos your standard 16 grade ones and maybe six grade or uh 16 triggers six grade threes and then the remaining of the deck of grade ones for this card because it is powerful this is his first stride and he can give 10k right away to the front row so imagine if he had eight grade ones in drop or 12 i mean that that seems like a lot of cards but with how these the war decks work they're returning their cards so just having 30k additional to the front row makes up for the fact that you'll have a lack of a back row. And it makes the unit more powerful when it stands. But no, honestly, this formation's pretty nice. And I honestly am going to review the cards as they're released and then build my own personal new Luard deck. I'm also going to do my current Luard deck I have in, uh, as a deck profile. So you should be seeing that tomorrow or Monday. Depends, because I have another video that I want to release tonight that will be a total of four videos. Should have been five that you guys saw, but four. So I'm probably going to take tomorrow off and record videos, but moving forward, this card's skill is pretty nice overall. I think it's a nice, well-rounded unit. I'm, I'm glad to see that we're getting new units for Luard, because it's been a while. And then comes Chrono's turn. After surviving that... And I think this is finally the moment that I start to gain some respect for Chrono. He says the coolest line. Devour my future and manifest. Xeroth Dragon. So, honestly, I just like the symmetry that he had to face this card in a fight. And now he's about to use it. And the purple flames just really bring out Chrono. He he becomes more... I, I, I've, I haven't been a big fan of Chrono's for a while. Just because of how much support Gear Chronicle gets. But honestly, this card is amazing. <clears throat> And it's just, to finally see a serious side of Chrono in such an important fight, on top of that for it to be just, the the way they did this was beautiful. Like, this picture is beautiful in itself. But the ultimate stride, he strides Xeroth Dragon of End of World Dusk. And it's just an amazing card. I think the art's a bit different in this scene. They... I don't know why, but I feel like it's a bit different. But it looks really nice. Um, this is like one of the few Xeroth Dragons too to keep its sim the Xeroth symbol um, of the Apostles there. And I just find it funny because all of um, the three remaining Apostles... Ignore that. The three remaining Apostles are... or um, Darkface is offended that Chrono is even using this card, not being an Apostle. I just think the attack from this card, and again, its art is beautiful. I will continuously say this is one of the best Xeroth Dragons. Um, we get a new, I think it's a Quintet Wall. It can't be a G-Guard because of the skill of Dusk. And if it is, then this is bad. But this thing has a ritual skill, Quintet Walling, and then it gains 10k from Quintet Walling. So it's a pretty powerful card. Um... Chrono then calls his avatar to the rear guard and attacks, and Kazuto blocks it because Kazuto is amazing, and he's just like guard, and Chrono's just like what? Um, so then we move on to Kazuto's turn, and these images are out of order, but I wanted to talk about Giza really quickly and its art. So we've gone from sort of having like these drapes to these mechanical pieces. So I'm assuming that's like this is a complete Giza. This is a more white, flushed out version of Giza. And we have the Apostle thing on the back, so we're we're hopefully going to get something really good out of this card, but it is not confirmed. Um, 
And a lot of the pictures we've seen thus far of Giza have been like this, where it gives us this real metallic dark color. But now I know that's from the light, so he's more of a white. And I really like that. But I wanted to talk about Giza. Um, then we get the most powerful moment in the anime, in this episode, in my honest opinion. He diff ride, or he's he Xeroth Dragon Ultimate Strides. To Xeroth Dragon of Zenon Peak. And this card, guys, this card is amazing. Um, I don't know where the picture went of its skill. So they sort of diff ride into this different dimension. We see Kazuto inside, sort of manning. Well, not really manning, but being as a sacrifice. And two planets explosion during the diff ride. And then he calls the dragon... So, I thought I had a picture with its actual skill. What the Xerath Dragon skill is, is Counter Blast 2. Search your deck for 4 cards. Call 2 to rear and place 2 on top of deck. And then, your rear guards get all trigger effects that are revealed during this turn. Meaning that if you draw a critical during a drive check, which you're guaranteed because you can stack it like that, all of your rear guards get a critical trigger. You draw a stand trigger. All your rear guards draw stands. This is a card that will flourish in a lot of decks. It will flourish in Blasters and Sanctuary Guard. It will flourish in Alt Miles. It will flourish in Oracle Think Tanks that predict the top cards of deck. And it will just be an overall flourishing card. Car decks I don't think this is going to flourish well in is... um. <clears throat> What's it called? Really, I can only think of Genesis. Angel Feather can use this pretty well. Where it's stacking two heal triggers for the rescue skills on the top of deck. And it's more than just getting the actual effect. They also get the 5k power. So you're giving effectively 10k to every home every time you draw a trigger. So honestly, my theory wasn't too far off from the stacking. That if you've seen that, go check out my channel. Because I did a bunch of videos. And that was one of my videos. But yeah, no, honestly, this card is pretty amazing. And I think it's probably by far the most powerful Xeroth Dragon, in my opinion. I might be hyping this card too much up, but to stack the deck and give all, all triggers revealed with its effect to everything is pretty good. Because what I can do with this card now is run a deck that multi-attacks on its own like Blasters. And then... Yeah, it makes Blasters even broken, more broken because it's literally just I call Blaster, I attack with Blaster, Flogel skill, stand, and I attack. But I can even take one step further. Before I attack with Blaster Blade, I attack with my Vanguard, get two criticals. And now I have a two, at least two crit swinging Vanguard with it, that restands multiple times. Or I can attack with Blaster Blade, draw a stand trigger, Stand the column, attack again with a critical, and do it vice versa. And that's predicting whatever the third trigger is as well. So if I get three triggers, it's a guaranteed 15k bonus to a blaster column. Alt Miles multi attackers will love this, and any just multi attacking deck will like this. Like I said, the only deck I see a big problem with this is Genesis, and that's because of soul charging shenanigans. But reality is, this is quite a powerful card for it. Even still, even though I don't I don't think I'd use it in a Genesis deck, I still think it's good in a Genesis deck. I just don't think it's great like it can be. Personal opinion, honestly, I love this card. Even Black Moon did a video, and he is super excited about it. And then we see Chrono Jet here. I thought I had a better picture, but I don't. Uh, he loses this fight because Kazuto gets four critical or two criticals, and you ain't stopping that. Especially when you, your hand is nothing. So he loses, and Black Moon's continuous and Dragonic Blaster's continuous theory of when you lose, your great main grade 3 is there, which is good, I guess. So we get the Chrono Lost, and we see the field set up, and it's pretty nice. Here's his G zone from losing, it's where it belongs, Gear Chronicle Trash. And then, guys, my favorite scene. Ha. <sighs> The most expensive G zone in all of card fight, burning up into a crisp. Feels good. Feels good. And this video is going on way too long. Um. Then obviously, since Giza won, he summons the Xeroth Dragon. Boy still hiding his face. 
And he basically just obliterates the same building again. And the imagery fades out to them worshipping Giza. Giza picks up Dusk and they sort of head out. Chrono awakes in a hospital, realizes his G-Zone's been burnt alive, and will next week fight Kazuto's brother. So that means we're going to see the new Sharanui unit, which makes me super excited for next week's episode. But I'm sorry, guys, that these keep coming out super late. It's not my fault. I have a job. If you guys want me to do this as best, more full-time, we need to bring up the subscribers and hit that like button, and I will find a way to make this a more... Early, an earlier video but until about three hours late later than the episode isn't terrible and i think that's where i'm gonna end this episode off guys so until next week for episode reviews i will see you all later peace